So it has a brew. I also have some serene loaf to get me through the um, the rest of this shit. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn an old PC into a router. Um, uh, the PC in question will be uh, that bastard over there. So we've already got some plugs was right into it. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to um, convert that into a router using Untangle. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, head straight over to the PC and we'll uh, run through some prerequisites before we get any, get any further. And then we'll go straight into setting up and then we'll, um, then we'll go from there. Right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to actually grab um, the download for Untangle. So what we're get, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a 64-bit uh, version on USB. Um, you can get an ISO as well if you want, so you can either burn an ISO or we can put it to a uh, USB. Um, I'm not actually going to run through how to put things on USB because um, if you're going to be doing this sort of stuff, you should know anyway. You can find out um, all sorts of things uh, on how to do it. Um, you can use Win32 Disk Imager to actually put things on a pen driver. This is in IMG format, so that will actually allow you to um, allow you to actually burn that to a USB. Then, because it's so small as well, you can pretty much put it on any USB you've got. So even like a 512. Um, make USB drive. I mean, something like a gig is probably recommended because obviously then it's um, gives you a lot of lot of room to play around with all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, yep. So once we've got our um, our image, then what we can do is we can actually then start imaging our machine and kicking off the setup for Untangle. Right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually boot the device we're installing it off of. So I'm going to install it off of a USB device because it'll be nice and quick, and it should boot into the Untangle installation. Uh, we'll do a graphical install unless you're a real advanced user and you want to do um, Single man line shiz. Um, I'm not going to do that because it's just easy just to go through the GUI. Um, ignore any um, messages like that that come up. Just don't worry about it. It should just uh, go straight in. Uh, and then we're into the actual untangle installation. So I want to go English, unless your uh, language is something else. Obviously UK for me because I'm in the United Kingdom. United Kingdom master race. British English, of course. And then what it'll do is it'll actually um, detect all the drives you've got installed as well. So if you've got many drives you want to... Um, say like you had like a proper server going or something like that, it'll detect what drives you've got um, and it'll allow you to then install it onto the correct drive which is quite cool. So what it's done there is it's done a quick um, memory test and the process of speed test just to make sure we are actually up to spec. Um, it'll tell you, uh, I believe it should tell you, it'll tell you that it isn't up to spec and then it'll just allow you to install it anyway. Um, I just think it would just be very, very slow running if it's on anything less than a so like a Pentium 4 or anything less than a gig of RAM. Um, I think they might have actually put up to um, 2 gigs now as their minimum spec, but this has got 2 gigs in it. So we've actually got two devices here. One of them is our USB device, which is the one we're installing off of, and the other one is uh, the hard drive that's actually installed. So we're going to go and continue on that one. And then what it will do is it'll actually partition all the drives and then it'll actually start installing Untangle for us. Um, and so we'll fast forward through that and uh, then we'll get to the actual setup page. Right, so after a reasonable amount of time you should then see the uh, setup for Untangle. So we're just going to run through this quickly and um, it's a, it does take quite a, quite a long time to install as you saw. Um, so it's definitely worth going and making a cup of tea or something like that uh, whilst you wait for it to install. Uh, right, so we're going to just give it a BS password for a minute. Uh, password, why not? That'll do. Uh, that's fine. We don't need to worry about that one. Obviously, I'm going to give it a more secure one uh, later on. Now, this is where we can do, um, or well, we can sort out our, our NIC. So I've got three installed at the moment. Um, now, because I know that the internal one is a Broadcom and the two externals are Intels, I don't need to worry about it. But we can just do, um, uh, what we can do is we can just uh, unplug one and um, see what they are. So if we just unplug uh, that one, and then it'll disappear off the screen, and then we plug it back in, and then it should reconnect. There we go. So once we've got that sorted, we know which one our cables are. Um, obviously, the one that I'm currently using, uh, the red red wire, is going to be the external cable. So that's going to be the one that does uh, that comes from the WAN, and the internal is going to be our LAN as uh, for so our internal LAN for that one. Uh, we can also set DMZ as well. We can do all sorts of weird, wonderful things with uh, if we've got multiple NICs, uh, but we're not going to worry about that one for a minute. Uh, right, so this is where we set up our DNS and our uh, DHCP at the moment. I'm just going to leave it as what the DHCP is set to. 
and not dick around with it because we don't need to worry about it. Um, we can also te test connectivity, but I know that's got WAN, uh, the WAN is working, so I don't need to worry about that. So I'm just going to go next. Right now, this is when we get to um, our first bit of configuring properly. So we've got two options we can use. We can either use the Untangle, um, the Untangle server as a router, which means it'll do our routing for us. It'll do NAT, um, and it'll also create a separate network um, using a different D, uh, um, using a different IP range. Or we can just set up as a transparent bridge. So. For instance, say we wanted, we had some funky things going on with an existing firewall and all we really wanted to do was set up something like a spam filter or set up maybe something like a captive portal or um, say perhaps we wanted to put in like virus scanning or something like that. We basically want like a transparent bridge between, um, between our existing router and the rest of our network. So we just want to do something funky using Untangle, but we don't actually necessarily want it to manage our IPs and all these other bits and pieces. But what we're going to do is we're actually just going to um, use this as the router. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this as a 0 0.1, uh, if my uh, 0 0.1, right, so we're going to set that as 0 0.1 and that's all fine and done. Then we're going to go next on that one because we're going to use it as a router. Right, so now here's the bit we get to whether or not we want to install upgrades automatically or we, whether or not we don't. Now, if you're in a business, you don't want them to install automatically because it could um, uh, it could cause all sorts of uh, problems. So, um, and But if you're at home, it doesn't matter too much. Um, obviously, if you're in a business, you don't want to install them automatically because sometimes the, auto, uh, the updates can cause problems. So um, in, in this case, I'm going to just disable them for a minute because we don't need to worry about it too much. I'm going to reset this up uh, to do my own shiz after done this video anyway. But... Um, so now we've got our Untangle server configured and it's now ready to download and configure uh, applications. Uh, we will eventually log into it using our PC and so we can get uh, so we can play around with some settings on it. Um, but for a minute we're just going to configure it through um, through here. It's going to take a while and it's going to load our apps up into the default rack. Right, now it's going to give us the option to recommend uh, to install the recommended stuff for us. I'm going to get rid of this for a simple fact that what it'll do is it'll install the standard package um, which will give us some trial stuff which you don't want to do after 30 days, it'll then time out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab the light package and we're going to just install the light package. You do actually have to have an account with Untangle so before you go any further it will probably ask you to either create an account or get you to log in um, so you will need to create an account for it. So with the light package you basically get um, uh, a few bits and pieces which allows you to um, there we go so we get basically all this stuff here um, it, none of the things in the light package are actually chargeable so which is good so I um, mean you can trial stuff using the premium and standard packages for 30 days but um, because because I'm not too fussed about that, I'm just going to install this one. So what we need to do is just log into this one. So once we've logged in, we should then be able to download that. It will start the download and it will start installing our um, light apps and things like that. So once that's actually downloaded and installing, um, we're actually going to go through the uh, network interfaces we've got currently set up here because um, just to sort of make you aware of what's going on. So um, this uh, red wire is our um, WAN. So that's coming from our existing network, coming from our root, um, coming from our uh, modem, whatever it is. And this is then going to our uh, live network. So uh, this will go to another PC or go into um, a switch or something like that. So that allows our clients to connect to the server um, and obviously get um, get our IP address and everything else like that. Right, so then the only thing we need to do once it's downloaded and installed our applications is to then go to the actual server address. Um, which will be 192.168.0.1 uh, and that will bring us to our login page so I'm just going to log into this one there we go right so now this is the actual um, interface itself um, and it's also also reporting that we should be using Google Chrome sort of Firefox because we're using IE. Um, I'm using IE because it just makes things easier just for me for to be able to use it. Generally, I use Google Chrome, but shout us for that. So then, here's the actual interface. Now, I'm not going to go too much into it. You can watch my video on what is Untangle and stuff like that from before. Um, but basically, it gives you a rack interface, and you can actually change things um, as you wish. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to turn off Captive Portal because we don't need that. File was on, we'll turn on intrusion prevention and what else we want, web filter we're not too fussed about, spiral blocker, fish blocker that's fine, reporting that's fine, attack blocker yeah that's fine. Now basically 
because it's like a rack system, you can go in and you can change, configure things straight through um, from the rack. So we can do pass lists and uh, block lists and things like that and event logs and all these bits and pieces that we can do. I'm not going to go into it too much because, um, so you can check out my video, which I'll put a thing up here so you can actually check that out. Um, now, the next video I'm going to do is to do uh, based on IP file because I've not actually played around with that just yet. Um, that will be my next video. Um, now, the only one thing to mention uh, as a last thing is um, this being a server as opposed to a traditional router, um, you can't just turn it off and turn it on like you normally would. Um, what you've got to do is you've got to go into system, I believe, and then basically do a reboot, a manual reboot. Um, now, if you find you can't actually connect to anything, not getting DHCP, and you want to restart your router uh, or your server, as opposed to just yanking the cable out, you do need to go to physically go to the router uh, slash server and actually log into it um, and make sure you restart it properly. Because if you don't, then you can end up having problems, um, and you then may have to reinstall your server OS. So. Um, just try not to try not to just turn it off. Um, and apart from that, I shall uh, catch you in a later video.